Iran has a suit. <laughs> For the first time yeah, in his No, now it's even we get money to buy a shower. Yes. <laughs> One right way to tell a story through images. Of pictures can complement the text, but a single dramatic image can also furnish standalone commentary on an individual, world events, or culture. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Through the Lens. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please let's put our hands together for this beautiful day. Please turn to your neighbor and greet them hey, and tell them how are you. Good to have you here. You can also ask, you can also greet them in your local language. I, let me recognize the protocol because thank you so much for all coming and supporting me. Now, the son of Francis, as uh, I normally call myself a villager uh, from Dawi Raham, Mr. King has told me our village. I am a photojournalist here at Next Media who picked a passion in telling these stories using my camera. It is not something that I jumped into. It is something that I picked interest in right away when I was going to senior one even maybe in around P6, after being uh, inspired by one of uh, our village photographers. You know, we had uh, one of our village photographers, those, uh, those days, those who used to walk over to, uh, 20 kilometers, knocking on the doors, asking, do you want pictures? Do you want pictures? So we, we had one person in our village, Rama, there. So every time that person, I, I'm from a family, <coughs> I, I forgot to recognize my sister. My family, I have my elder sister, our firstborn. Jen is here. Uh, where is Jen? She's there. That's our firstborn and I'm the last born. So we have a connection together. So every time, she's one of the people who likes pictures so, so much. So every time that person would come, that person who was called Rupataji, that, that was his name. <laughs> so every time he would come, he would, uh, he would see the energy he puts in, in taking those pictures, telling you, please, turn like this, do like this. So I, I, I fell in love with the camera. I remember asking him uh, how he does it, and, and he tells me, he told me in Nyambole, uh, he said, Meaning, me, I'm a journalist. So I didn't understand those things. I knew who it was a big, big thing. So I told him, what, what, what do we do to be, to be one? So, he, so what you do, you want to must study journalism. But I didn't know that to be uh, a photographer of study journalism, I thought I was studying journalism. That's why I'm one of the people who didn't get issues in, 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 in choosing where to study. The time he told me that you have to be a journalist, that's the day I started thinking about journalism. That even entering in senior one, senior two, even at the university, I didn't have any other option. Going to the university, uh, in HS, they told me you have to do languages. I wasn't very good in languages. That's, what, that's how that gentleman lied to me, but he lied to me, because I have seen so many journalists who do not do languages, but they are doing well. So the gentleman told me, you see, you have two languages, that is literature and Kiswahili. Ah. But me, I wasn't good in either literature or Kiswahili. So entering, going to senior two, you know, when you're in senior two, you opt these subjects to do. 
I, I, I had to do, you cannot do true language, you can either do literature or Kiswahili. So unfortunately I passed Kiswahili so much with a distinction and, and I, I got a pass aid in literature. So I said journalism is gone. But I, I, I begged and I begged, I lied my teacher, I, not because I don't know literature but I'm inspired. So give me a chance and a try and, and I get so, he said, so I'm giving literature to do it. If you don't perform well in the, this first semester, you will go back in Kiswahili because I've done a, a distinction with Kiswahili. I gave myself to literature, I did literature and passed it. Since then I started literature because I was told it is the only way to journalism. I did literature up to the university. So, <laughs> but when I reached the university, I realized that these things are different. That, that's, that's when I started bringing back my camera, when I reached the university. I was told journalism is different. You can either be a photojournalist or you be uh, either a video journalist or anyone, or a journalist or anyone, or a reporter. So me, I already had my my spot. I took on this job. I remember after after my university when I came to for my internship. There's something that I want to tell you and you people didn't know about, and, and I think even my see what about it. I came to ask for internship here at Next Media. Uh, my CEO told you comes from Ram and I come from Ram. But I never knew that N the owner of NBS comes from Ram. Me, I came, I brought myself to ask for internship. And luckily, I was given the internship uh, placement. Without knowing, he came back. Because I came as an intern, I was welcomed uh, by newsroom late. Those, those days was uh, Honorable uh, Joyce Wagner. I did my internship with Next Media in the newsroom, but my heart was in photography. I used to, 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 I remember telling her, I went to her desk and I told Madam uh, Joyce, Honorable Joyce, I told her, Madam Joyce, I feel like I want to go to production and do something. Because I, I saw people going out with cameras, what? And I wanted to do, be in cameras, where cameras are. So I, he gave, she gave me an opportunity to, get, to go in uh, production. I, I did my internship and finished. After, after my internship got done, I wrote my email very well. I said, uh, by then our head of the department was uh, Late Doreen. Our head of the department uh, uh, passed on a few uh, years ago. I wrote to her and said, thank you so much for an opportunity. Because I, I gave myself, I went to the field, I befriended the people. All these journalists, they helped me so much. Because I was aware that even if it is not here, I don't have anything that I've not picked from next media. They gave me the platforms. I I told I wrote to her an email. I said thank you so much for the opportunity given. I have I'm done with my internship. I I have gone back. I appreciate. So when I sent to her, she called me immediately. I said, Isano, your internship is done, but you are. You are a very hardworking boy. We still, are you done with the university? I said, yes, I'm done. But you need to be around, you, 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 either you can learn. She introduced me to our uh, HR, by then was Mr. Wanga. I did, I was, I was put on training. Later I was given a contract by God's grace. Since then I became a transformer, since 20, 2019, I became a transformer. And I gave myself photojournalism. And uh, I said, dear God, give me uh, energy, give me everything to do this thing passionately, because it is the reason why I'm here. It is the reason why I'm being paid. It is the reason why I went to school. I gave myself photojournalism, and I said, I must tell these stories the way they are. I must use my pictures. I must use whatever I could, this camera. Sometimes it is, uh, when we are there, it is crushed and <laughs> it meets a lot of things. When you, you see, photojournalism is what Mr. King said, photojournalism is not paid well, but still, what we face in the field. But they give us energy to continue. You see, when you go to the field, beaten cameras are spoiled. I don't know how many gadgets I have replaced, but they give me courage to, to, to continue. Because at the end of the day, this is what I do. I do not want to, I'm just saying, I was appreciating everyone for supporting me. In a special way, I want to say thank you to, to Mr. King Garisa for giving him, me an opportunity to, to 
do whatever I did to be who I am. I used the next media. It is because of next media that I came to next media without anything. No one knew me, in other words. But if I see all those people here, they have known me, we have kept in touch because they, uh, they are associated with next media and they know me from next media. They son of, of NBS. They son of NBS. I want to say thank you. This is just the beginning. We, we reached a time and say, I, want, I, I, I couldn't wait to have a day that I could have people like here and they look at the things that I've done in my four and a half years, close to five years at Next Media. I've been here for five years close and I couldn't wait to have all of you here, my people, my friends, to say, to show you the thing. Most of them, most of these pictures you see them on social media, they are not new. But here we are celebrating the, the power of visual storytelling. That visual storytelling also communicates. There is a story. The way a journalist stands in the front of a uh, reporter on air, stands in front of a camera and speaks and tells a story. That's how the picture can tell a story. And I can, uh, I, most of the people here are testimonies that the pictures have told stories about them. And maybe they have not survived with that Nairo Posti logo. That Nairo Posti logo, whenever it comes, it will have you. Thank you so much for listening to me. I thank you so much once again, the Deputy Speaker, for... She, uh, Deputy Speaker, he's a kind of a person who... who <laughs> I don't know how I can uh, talk about him. He, he empowers the youth. I, I don't think I had so much hard time in having him here. Because I know how much... Say there, I will be there. Because he... He knows what it means to support the youth, be there for the youth, he knows. I want to say thank you so much to, to His Excellency Edward II for accepting my invitation. It is my privilege to have you here and everyone. Thank you so much. Let's uh, not... Uh, and, and what we're going to do now, it is... Uh, you see, far even... Uh, I check them somewhere and before I reach next media, they are all over. They reach there before me. And, and when... <laughs> That, that picture, some of these pictures, I think that one was taken last year during uh, when Ginger was the lead of uh, of, uh, of uh, Uganda Matters. I walked with Samson Kasumba. We walked from uh, Eastern Uganda up to Namgongo. Yes, we walked. Samson Kasumba, I wish he was here, but unfortunately he had a bicycle. He would ride and walk. Mostly. <laughs> so these. Uh, <laughs> These are, these are ladies, these are old, old women that, 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 that walk. That woman who traveled from Fort Porto, I mean walked from Fort Porto to... I don't think uh, uh, Brenda can manage to walk like this. So it is the same as those pictures. These pictures, they, they encourage us that this is a religious part of it. In whatever we do, I mean, for people that have belief, that, that have that kind of uh, attachment to, to, to all of us, I mean, we believe, we are believers, that you cannot fail to, to, to do that work, to thank God. I think also because of this successful event, this year to be one of the people to work and appreciate God for this uh, wonderful event. Uh, this, you know, this is our CDF. People who do not know that, so that is our CDF. And most of uh, this is was a massacre. Uh, yes, I don't know why. Yes, this is, all these pictures are from massacre. And he's very rare, he's a rare person. So when you see these pictures, I also have them, I, I, I don't give them out. They are only for post. Yeah, very rare. Uh, these are also, we cannot have all good things when we are doing the photojournalism photography. These are things that we meet when, when I'm moving. My, my child of event is through the lens. When I'm, 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 I'm looking into my lens, through my lens, I see, I see very many things. And uh, we, we thank God that some of our readers are here. They, it may be do something to these uh, young girls on the streets. It is very painful seeing those young girls. A young girl carrying another young girl begging for something to eat. Mm -hmm. You can see this, uh, this, this one is, is this picture of, uh, of a believer crying 
not spraying, but praying. Hmm? Spraying, really. Spraying, not praying. These are pictures that, that really touch people's feelings. When you look at this, what happens here, you say, ah, God have mercy on us. Hmm? They, they shake your feelings, they, they, shake, they test your belief. Ha! Ah. <laughs> so, I, I, will not tell, I will not say where these ones were taken, but uh, yes, keeping law and order. Mm -hmm. This is keeping law and order, and uh, we cannot avoid it. Yeah? That is, uh, yes, that's when we are, maybe, if I, I, I don't go by that time, I don't think my camera survived here when I was running with these people. I remember I left the race there. But, uh, I don't think when, when you see these pictures on your phones, I, don't, I, I, I wonder what most of you think. And when you look at them and, and have a feel of them and say, oh, but this picture, where was this? Doesn't this boy fear these people, these police people? We fear them. But we cannot also get close. Not fearing, but respect their work when they are doing it. But we have to tell these stories. We have no option. We have to tell these stories. What is, what is important is to respect what they are doing. Do we have, is it enough that? But I'm sure there is too much uh, to showcase. When I received my invitation by SAP, I went back on WhatsApp and said, I don't know whether you wrote it. <laughs> Just received the SAP asking me, and um, just forwarded it to my protocol team to readjust. Because it's been very tough, we are having very, very busy schedules during the budgeting process and graphics. Uh, one of the reasons I was reminded my days. In my village, I used to be in Mr. Quartaji. Because <laughs> when I was in senior two, my dad bought me a Yashika camera. See, you guys are having reasons which are trendy. The camera room scares us. I've seen Abu. Okay. I'm preparing Abu. Man, I pray for your back. Abu is the official photographer of His Excellency the President. You should stand up for him. And I had a Yashika camera. It was very small. Very small. And at that time, I think that was around. 97, 1997. They, we used films. Like, just <laughs> and then you had to close yourself in the very, you could open the camera at midnight, or you create a dark room from anywhere. Because without a dark, any light, all your photos would be gone. So you had to create a dark room just for blankets. I brought the village around, and we covered the village. <laughs> we had the technique, and you changed the film. And then we could give them to a man who was going to a man who was in Shaka. So my dad would take them to Shaka to be taken to Kisumu for development. We were being developed in Kisumu. And they would bring back the photos every Thursday. Once a week it would happen, only once a week. And that's for the Great Upshame, the five districts of Great Upshame, a long time ago. <clears throat> and I was the only cameraman in the whole grade, so I was a celebrity on my own. <laughs> because in the village, to get a dance from a beautiful girl, you either had to buy a sweet. <laughs> Then the average girl would buy pips and sweet pips. <laughs> because you couldn't afford soda. Soda was for Christmas. Okay? So sweets were for the beautiful ones, like those ones I'm seeing here. Okay? To dance with very hard to buy. Just come and say, hey, hi. Then we show you have some sweets. And for the average ones, uh, you to come just to pull out pips to see <laughs> and uh, that's, our life was sweet, it was even more 
It's so complicated. It's not comparative to the It's so So very expensive. Those things some of us would have had a chance to do. So then we had complicated ones. Now for marriage, asking for a hand in marriage, one of the qualifications in the village, you had to at least take a picture with her. And it was also a walk dating and using uh, means which other people could not afford because a camera in the downtown Vitera Komitoma was extremely rare. Now, these are stories which my son so strange for of today because most of you, now your cameras have phones. Not your phones have cameras. Your cameras even have phones. I remember that advert. You see, my camera has a phone instead of the phone having a camera. It might be strange, as it is strange for me, to hear that in the 70s, there was a rationing of sugar, of soda, of salt. So this was as soon as yesterday. And the most interesting part, where we used to make some kamani, quick one, now which you wouldn't have to go to account to that. Uh, these guys would have enough money, but the girls were demanding for pictures. So we were charging five shillings for a flash. Because the sign of a picture, that you've taken a picture, is a flash. <laughs> so go and take a flash of a computer. <laughs> then you would come and say, you are a car They got spoiled, and someone would have their day off, but they would have dated them in competition, so it was fun, it was fun. But that helped some of us own our business actually. You know, responsibility and knowing you can go, you do something for a certain benefit. Uh, from of course you saw the story of my teacher who uh, who made messages today, and uh, from his bandits. So we grew slowly like that, and we managed to make it much later in life. Now, that shows you the innovation that we've gone through, the transition that we've gone through, and the speed at which we are transitioning. Don't be shocked next time if you find the next Isano is a robot if you had to go at the speed of AI, uh, which our brother, the Vice Chancellor, has been talking about. The speed, because it's now estimated, I think, by around uh, 2050, that machines are going to be cleverer than human beings. By 2030. Yeah. Machines are going to be much cleverer. So I want to ask my brother, his son, and team to embrace innovation. Because one of the greatest speeches is the speech, if you go and look, you see a speech by the CEO of Nokia. When Nokia was being taken over by Microsoft, and, and he cried. He said, we didn't do anything wrong. But somehow, we never got it right. So sleeping in comfort. We are photogenic, you know you come still. Why? You take a picture, you say. You need innovation. What Isano has done is putting a human touch, empathy, into his photography. That's innovation. Otherwise, some of you can do it by lying down, by kneeling, by what? You need to put a human face behind what you do. You need to show you are enjoying what you are doing. My press secretary, my senior press secretary is a, a photojournalist. I grabbed him also out of what he was doing, Mr. Alex Sagar, when he was voted the best photojournalist for five years consecutively. And when I was looking for a press secretary, I, I picked him for money and I took him. We might be paying better, but I enjoy what he's doing. Because I see passion, I look at a picture 
when I look at the son of Francis's picture, I even imagine him when he was there. I don't just look at the picture. No, I say this is a very rich picture that has a story behind it. Show yourself. We are you happy? We are you in a good mood? Your Excellency, these pictures you've seen here, you know, it's a mix of emotions, it's a mix of empathy, it's a mix of that touch, and, and, and that's what I usually tell people who are very scared of artificial intelligence. I say, artificial intelligence, Dr. Muganga, maybe uh, we've not had the chat, but I've tried to read a lot in artificial intelligence with the major aim of how we can regulate artificial intelligence. Because if not, we shall be in trouble. I not in whatever I've read, a multitude of researchers from some of the best researchers, I've not seen empathy. I don't know how a robot will have that feeling of a human being, will feel for me as a human being. That touch, where he can touch me and, and I really feel. Now that's, most of our people are like robots in Uganda. He's a secretary, you enter an office, someone is programmed. I will come you this way, I take you straight to your boss. Even I don't agree, even I, I've done my job, I finish. If you are going to work that way, you don't have a future. Everyone wants to feel, you know, even look at these guys I was sharing with my friend Bob Drane, asking him, but Bob, you're saying I get you business for your funeral company. Yeah. So, so how, what, tell me about your prayer every night. <laughs> well, well, how do you approach a CEO of a bank asking for a loan? So how do you just find that people are about to die maybe? <laughs> no, he said, no, we find a way of telling a story. These guys, they say, oh, sorry. Yeah. Then ah, we feel for you, we are going to give you, you need the decent send off, we know your morning. And then they give you a bill. If you say give me a discount, you say, ah. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's, it's that human touch. So I want to thank you, Francis, for that. I have seen one picture uh, where they were pouring uh, water onto a building that had been caught by fire. Immediately, what came to my mind is about planning for our city. And I saw my brother Bob, I was like, Bob, these are situations we face. We have the fire department, it's ready, but because of how we planned our city. I'm adoring my sister. I know it's not one about your job, and it's for all of us. But sometimes it's disgusting. Kampara is such a huge, big slum. You finish putting up your house, someone brings apartments. Someone brings a church. Another one is racist to the bar. I, I, I have a friend of mine, he left his place, put around like 20 billion in a home. After staying out for two and a half years building his home, after they had finished, he had entered like this, someone was licensed to put up apartments and he's facing directly into the swimming pool. Wow. He said, I'm shifting from my house. You really feel So, such a picture as help us understand that we have to do more as leaders. Such a picture as help Bob yes. understand that uh, when you're conducting arrests, you have to put a human in. Because some of these things you don't see. You don't see. Here, such a picture as for street beggars, those kids on the street. They've opened some of our eyes to the debate we've been having that we must give much more money to get these young children from the streets. And this time, not money given KCC, because KCC for you. It takes away children because it's cleaning the streets. <laughs> now I want that money to go to the Minister of Gender, who is going to rehabilitate these kids. Because it's not about, it's not about the duty of the city. And uh, as I conclude, I want to thank my brother Kim uh, for 
you know, this king, he is my senior brother. And when he's with me, because my young brother, he's the one who convinced me to go into politics. <laughs> we sat one day and we said, but Kim, you're successful here, they were you're successful, you guys are making money and but we say the people who are making taxes in Parliament are people who have never even sold tomatoes. They don't know what the tax means. They don't know, they just say add, add, add. So we said, let's go into politics. He said we were going to Rama. I said I'll go in Toma. When I launched my campaign and I started, he said, ah, that's what teacher is you. First test for us and see how it is. Since then he has refused to come. But we keep in touch advising each other. But I want to thank you for giving young people a platform. The guys you have developed here is benefiting the country. This is just a project beyond you. He so said, I have the it's a business I was making, and, and, and I was losing a lot of money. So someone comes to me and says, what are you doing? Well, I thought you were a smart investor. Why don't you invest in the real estate and what? And I said, well, I can, but if I go, I put up 100 apartments, I will only need around two, three people to help me collect the rent, OK? And I become rich. But if I got a half of that money, I put it in a certain venture that is going to add value to lives of 200 people, which is a business. I am going to, you know, waking up and knowing that at least 200 people can only survive, can only put food on their table because of you, can only get to physical. physical. And I want to thank you, my brother, for doing that. And uh, other young people should learn uh, from King. The discipline we have, uh, I can tell you another complaint which I have personally, is our young people, King, you are lucky. Our young people are not employable. Sometimes when we say, some of us tell you from experience, because we have business, you employ a young person, instead of that young person helping you to build your business so that it grows, generates more money and you pay them well, they start duplicating your product. So immediately they've killed your business and they as will remain standing. It will never grow. So now Isano would have gone and started a small studio on the side. The best pictures are for his studio. The mid, mid ones are for NBS and Melo. But he remained committed. The best are first for Melo. So people should learn. It's a very, 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 very big issue. You give a young person an accountant a job, he falsifies your accounts. From nowhere you see you are a looking when you do They demand a lot of money from it. So it's, I don't know what we are going to do about making our people employable to build sustainable businesses. The ambition is so big, but ambition should be based on patience and character. So I want to thank those ones who are doing well, and the team at NBS is doing extremely well. Not everyone is bad. Please, I do not judge everyone. I'm saying if you and I can give names when you come to me because I have business and I know what we're going through getting people. Uh, finally, my brother Isano. <clears throat> Make this a side hustle. I think we can even discuss a, a business model. Okay, where you and uh, Mr. Kim they can discuss something really good because we've discussed very many business models where it's open. When you see, we buy pictures, the industry, I mean, we buy pictures from Getty Images. Look for a picture of Matoke, a high resolution picture of Matoke in Uganda. 
you will not find it on any Uganda website. You will find it on Getty Images, which is an American website that will charge you a thousand dollars. And most of you guys are moving around with comments. Look for a picture of a mountain gorilla. Because these are pictures which are used internationally. You will find it on Getty Images. You won't find the Ugandan selling you that right. So we are seated on a very huge potential. Very, very huge potential. If you go to your camera, you set up a very good website, you become disciplined, you go for training, you get the abuse, the, the sanos, the sagara, that what, and you train very well. I tell you, you can make very good money. This is the second photo exhibition I've attended. The first one was by Faith Haribo, my sister. But we were buying her pictures at a very good amount. And I gave some to ambassadors as gifts. And they all appreciated a picture of Kampara at night. A picture of Boda Boda. Get the images, sells it around $2,000. If you want a high resolution, our own border border, a Muslim comes, takes a picture, sells it two thousand dollars. For you, you're complaining about everything. <laughs> <laughs> you're complaining there's an influence that made the young. When a Muslim is selling a picture of your own border border at a price more than the price of a border border. So let's think outside the box. There are very many opportunities. Kin, I wish you could give us another platform where we could get the youth and we train them on business. Business that can work, business that is very, very easy to do, business that is uh, extremely beneficial. So, Francis, I'll be supporting you. You know, in, in auction, the best money is not what is in my girlfriend. That's what they call private treaty or private auction. I prefer that. If you have any picture you want to give me, it doesn't need to come with many words. Come, bring it to me. I'll do a private auction. Now, of course, the son of Francis. And uh, I'll ask uh, our CEO, King Carissa, to join us. And also, uh, with part of my private treaty, I'll also contribute more from the one of my brother, the Pierre Yurida. <laughs> and now, the photo moment. And right honorable the speaker, before you leave, uh, we have another gift for you. And uh, I'll, I'll ask that uh, as we are taking this, uh, our very own Professor Muganga will present this wonderful gift to have this picture. Join us for the final picture. Uh, the SPASO and CDF of the UPDF, uh, General Young Senegal. <laughs> we are going to buy it at one minute. Ladies and gentlemen, anyone who can buy it better than us? At this time, it's good. And we appreciate you. Please, another round of applause. And of course, uh, you go home with your first pose for your photo, photo moment. Uh -huh. As uh, 
Being my village mate from Rahama, he is a, did you know that his son was a champion of high, high jump champion, national? Yes, he can jump for a view. He's an amazing young man. We have very many photojournalists here. Isano decided to craft his brand to be a celebrity photojournalist. I don't want to say so and so is better than who all of them are very good. But Isano decided to say, you know what? As I'm taking photos, I'm also going to take myself taking photos. You never see all these photographers, by the way. These photos. We never see them. Isano will do a function and also photograph himself. <laughs> Say, while I was taking this, this is how I was. I don't know who takes those photos. <laughs> so Isano is an amazing young man. So my, it's not Isano who came to me. Say, a few of my uh, people came to me and said, Isano wants to do an event. He wants, I said, event? What kind of event? Say he wants to showcase what is. But I said, Isano tweets every day. He tweets whatever he photographs, he tweets. He said, no, no, he won't. I didn't know that there's a show like this one, where you gather people and then put them together and then show them this is what I've been doing. That is Isano for you. So I said, no, no, let him do whatever he wants to do. Give him space, give him, support him. Let him do whatever he wants to do. So this is Isano's event. It's not a next media event. So whatever you've done, you've supported a young man is Clap for yourselves. <laughs> and I want to thank senior people. You imagine Deputy Speaker, Right Honorable Taewa, taking off time to come and sit here. And he has seen all, because he's on social media, he's like me. He has seen all these photos. He said, let me go and be there and support this young man. Thank you, Right Honorable. The same way I'm thanking the, 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 the Vice President Emeritus, His Excellency Sekhar. Thank you very much for supporting these young people. When these people see you here, they get encouraged. Journalism doesn't pay well. If you are looking for money, please, it is not in looking for news. It is a passion, it is a calling. That's a fact. That's why whenever people come here, we train them, they are good, they are celebrities, they say, you know what, I've got a job in, uh, in a certain NGO, a bank. we support them to go. Because they will earn three times what we pay them. Our next media pays two times than any media house in this country. We pay better than any other, that one I can say. Because I've never gone to sleep that, oh, so and so will go to another media house, huh? That, those are not part of my worries. To, to do what? Better culture, we pay better, better. So, so I know, but they go to parliament, they submit there. Yeah, I believe you are paying him three times what he used to earn. And we will be a party for submit to go. Go and start this, go and do this. Isano is here because he's so passionate on this stuff here. So thank you for supporting him. Isano, thank you for being uh, representing our, I don't know if uh, in our village there's someone who is more prominent at your level. Thank you for representing our village. <laughs> and thank you for representing Next Media. Thank you for promoting all our brands, Nile Post and others. And keep moving, and we'll keep supporting you. Asan, Asana, you are welcome here. If you feel at home, if you don't see me here, all the people are there to serve you. Thank you very much. But to look into events, anything new. So let's look out for other things, uh, other photographers elsewhere. It might not be necessarily in Uganda. Look out for others outside Uganda. Or the top names in Uganda that you can you will find to cook their people too. Then takes me to another point. Uh, let's also find mentors. Most of us are you know, people that you can approach and talk to. Uh, yes, we are busy. You may call me once or twice and 
maybe I don't uh, respond to you in a positive way, don't tire, please. Uh, starting out is always like that. I remember when I was starting out at the Observer, uh, I, had a, I had a passion for sports. So uh, one day there was a match, I think it was Uganda versus, I don't remember, I don't remember uh, the team of versus. I didn't even have a camera, I borrowed from someone. So, uh, and they told me that uh, accreditation, you had to go to FUFA House in May. Okay. So I just walked, uh, uh, got into the office of uh, Ahmed Hussein. Hussein didn't know me. I introduced myself, he asked for an ID, I did have an ID. I called back, I, I asked him to call one of the editors. They called the editor, he says, ha, ah, I know him, but ask him to come back to office. Uh, we first talk. I went back to office, I talked to this guy and said, yeah, but I was there, you said you don't know me. He said, yeah, I, I wanted to be sure it was you. Yeah. I wanted to be sure it was you. So he called again. I, I remember I didn't even get, I missed out on the opportunity because uh, uh, Hussein had only two slots left. So between me coming back to office and you know calling him again, the two slots were taken. I had to buy a ticket to go to Nambore. I remember the first pictures I took, I took them from the stands up. You can imagine how bad they were looking. But I didn't, I didn't give up. The next day, I, I got attached to, you know, a child. A child showed me the way how to do it, or if you're planning to go and shoot and these guys are tossing you around, this is what you can do, uh, this is how to get uh, down and shoot. So you buy your VIP ticket, yes, it will cost a lot, but you know what you're looking for. Uh, in the future, you may not need to even have all those things because people know you by face. They'll see you and say, hey, Nicholas, please, please come. No, 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 don't disturb him. This guy is big. You know, you pass because of your face value. So uh, what I'm trying to drive you at is the mentorship bit of it. You know, uh, Get guys that will show you exactly how the field works. You understand? The guys that will take you through the ranks, yes. Uh, sometimes it's hard if you keep... Uh, by yourself and say, ah, but what can they, you know? <laughs> what can they, they won't do anything for me. Yes, you might, it might not be uh, good for you starting out. Then, as you start out, shoot everything humanly possible. Everything you learn with. If you have your camera, try to shoot everything. You never know uh, where you might land the next day. Uh, personally, uh, if, if, you, if one of you guys follows me, you'll find me at a rugby game today, you'll find me traveling with the cranes, wherever they play, you'll find me, say, at the World Athletics Championship somewhere, you'll find me covering politics, you'll find me in bands doing portraits for, you know, corporate guys, you know, because I invested time to learn many of these things, you understand? So, so create a brand that can cut across, so you're not limited, that say, if, if, uh, if there's a football match, I can't handle it because I don't know how to you know, go about it. Yes, I, I'm not saying uh, specializing is bad, but in the kind of world that we're in, it's better for you to know a thing or two about each and every aspect of photography, you understand? Then like Abu said, my friend, don't, don't fear when uh, well, we were starting out. Yes, you're lucky that you know there are examples that you can look at and say, okay, get inspired. While we were starting out, there were a few, a handful of them, and uh, sometimes we would think and say, oh, what, what, are we doing a mistake entering into this kind of you know work? But to assure you, uh, with photography or photojournalism, tosola sulanja, tosola sulanja, you. You'll earn money, you'll get gigs, people will be yearning for you, people will be calling you for, you know. Uh, for, for example, you'll go for a press conference and you take a picture of someone because they've seen you, the kind of movements that you're making or the kind of way you behave. They will come to you, walk to you and say, can I have this picture? And most times, most cases, that doesn't come at, uh, you know, uh, free. They will pick up maybe like a 50 note, maybe. It's not bribing you, but probably someone is appreciating your work. They want you to share what you've already taken with them. You understand? So, so as we go on as you know, uh, new 
newcomers or people that are studying uh, photojournalism, don't get scared. It's just the beginning and you know, there's a lot that can happen. I've been with uh, photographers world over that and there's a guy I was with uh, for the World Athletics Championships uh, and the ends, it was it was an event for nine days and the guy was earning uh, fifty thousand dollars for just coming uh, to document athletes, uh, athletes that were on the course, and he's earning fifty thousand dollars. And how many people can make that? So, so, so we shouldn't limit ourselves on what we see here. There's a lot out there that we can you know, try to harness. And also, uh, maybe, maybe the last thing uh, I'll say for now: try as much as possible to showcase your work. Showcase your work. Yes. Uh, I'd been around for some time, and people that knew me knew me, but I'd not, you know, shared my work. Until I started sharing my work, that's when I, that must have been like 2017 when I started sharing my work out. Uh, I would go for events, right there and then, uh, uh, download my work onto my phone, watermark, and share. So that's when people started following me a lot and, you know, I got so many opportunities because I shared the work and, you know, uh, I remember, who remembers the boat cruise accident? Yes, uh, I think I took uh, some of the pictures that people related with even up to date. Uh, while I was uh, trying to tell stories in, 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 in different ways and, you know, uh, trying to capture emotions, it takes me back, let me, let me go back to a bit of creativity. I remember when I was covering that, yes, I went there, yes, I was looking out for, uh, you know, rescue teams trying to pull out the wreckage, uh, rescue teams trying to, you know, take the bodies out of the water and stuff like that. But then I thought to myself, what more can I add to this story to try and make it, you know? Yes, it's a sad story, but maybe try to uh, tell it in a more kind of appetizing, you know, give it a bit of, you know, now. So I decided to pick out little details of whatever was going on. I took a picture of uh, the Jameson bottle that was floating, because these guys were partying when, when the unfortunate incident happened. They were partying. I, I took pictures of their, the remains of their uh, shoes floating on water, just to try and, you know, uh, give it a different angle, not, not not what everyone was looking out for. Even when they were trying to pull out the wreckage, I did, you know, uh, little details of uh, how they were bolting the chains together and pulling, all those things. So, uh, that with creativity. Get to a place, try to find a way to, you know, a way to uh, do something that is not, okay, it's out of the usual, you understand? It will, Make you stand out. Who knows uh, Katumba Badru? Anyone of you that knows Katumba Badru? Yeah. If, yes, if we are looking for creativity in most of these things, try looking out for Katumba's work. Try looking out for Katumba's work. Yes, we compete among ourselves, but we don't compete in a bad way. We compete to learn from each other. We compete to uh, inspire each other. We don't compete in a bad way. Today, we go for an event and say Katumba takes a good picture and takes the day. Tomorrow it will be, it will be me or uh, Miriam or anyone else. You understand? Because we keep the fire burning every other day. Yes, it's a very uh, draining field uh, that sometimes you don't know what will happen, but try as much as possible to also take care of yourself. You understand? For example, if you go to cover a riot and you see things are running out of hand, please go away. Yes, I'm one of the luckiest uh, photojournalists that has not been beaten. I've survived all these years. Why? And I'm always at the amount of, you know, caves. Most times, I'm on the side of police. Yes, on the side of police, you receive, uh, you know, flying objects like stones and stuff, but no bullet will touch you. Or they might not even, because they're advancing towards the guys that are rioting, they might not even beat you because you're close to them. But most times, when you when you see the situation is running out of hand, please. You've heard the famous saying, no story is worth your life. Yeah, 
run away because you've got to cover a story. We don't want you to be a part of the story. Say, eh? Hey. Say, James are going to cover a riot. James was shot. You know? So, whenever you see, not to be a coward to say, uh, uh, you're, not, you're, you're not trying to do your work, but sometimes things run out of hand and it's only best for you to you know, go away. There was a time we were covering uh, something at Najana Kumbi, and one of, one of the police guys who was our friend came and said, Wait, order is there, we are going to beat everyone. So, vacate this place. The next five minutes, they're going to clear out everyone. It doesn't matter if you're a journalist, if you're an MP or what one, they're going to be. So we told our colleagues, please, let's run. I was with a guy called Lodrick. So we got, a, we got on a border. No, actually, before we got on a border, we walked a few, you know, a few steps away, like a few meters away. In two minutes, <laughs> Red Talk Rain Dinner was meeting everyone regardless of who you are, even if you are Janice, they were just meeting you. So take care of yourselves. Anticipate uh, if things will run out of hand and run away. They want, you want, <laughs> you want uh, heroes, heroes, most of the heroes we have are dead. You understand? You don't want to be a hero who is dead. You understand? So as we venture into this kind of uh, uh, job, let's not forget to keep ourselves safe. Then, uh, one, one other thing I forgot to talk about. While we were starting out, there's one train that was really happening. Guys used to look, even now, it still happens. Uh, people used to look down upon people that hold cameras. Like a cameraman. Let me, with my colleagues, they know. If someone calls you cameraman, you just don't even mind them. You ignore them and walk a distance away from them. So don't mind the naysayers. Be focused on, on the common goal because I know one day you'll come back. One day you'll find me or you'll uh, inbox me on my uh, Twitter or any of the platforms and say yes, whatever you say it came to pass. Don't let anyone stop you from achieving what you want to do. Understand? Yeah, thank you so much. We'll keep the conversations going. That's it for me for now. Go with the reporters. So the reporter would introduce themselves and then they'd be like, um, my name is so and so and you know like people before people used to look at photographers as no ordinary men. Yeah? You know that's someone who's uh, so ordinary and what before we made our foot on, on, on ground. So someone would say, um, let me say Hey, I'm Nicholas Van Nezechi. I'm the one who has been calling you for this appointment. I've come with my cameraman. Ah. So it'd be like, okay, so I don't work for the newsroom, I work for this person. That thing used to hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> but nowadays when I go with someone and they say, ah, I'm so and so, you know, I've been the one who has been calling you for this interview. Uh, now, um, I've, I've, do you know what they normally say nowadays? I've come with a... Uh, one of the best photographers in the country, his name is Abakar Goa. So the focus goes away from the reporter, and then this man will start a conversation with you. Oh, oh this is a big, oh, you might have been seeing you. How are you? Hey. So now the photographer, I mean the writer becomes the old man now. <laughs> we now take over. So that's where we end up. So guys, don't limit yourselves like we have told you. You keep focus. Uh, I want to invite my name is Wantsemba Miriam, as I've been introduced by people who have gone ahead of me, Nicholas and Abu. Thank you so much. Um, they already mentioned that besides being a documentary photographer, I am a teacher, very big on teaching. And one of the things about teachers is by the time they talk to people, they're very interested in first finding out who they are talking to. So we may not only introduce ourselves, but I would love to have just a clear, a rough picture of who is here. Are we students? Which uh, students, uh, just by show of hands? Um, journalism students or journalism students? Um, practicing photographer, but not student? No, we say do. Okay, practicing photographers. Into photojournalism, documentary? Yes, and then 
for the students that are here, okay, I think that's obvious. If you're a student and you're here, it means you're interested in photography or photojournalism or just photography generally. Uh, otherwise, you know, you could be in campus chilling or like Netflix, whatever. Um, so I'll follow what my colleagues earlier already, uh, the, the direction they took while they're talking about a few things. Um, but I really feel so inclined to, first of all, from what they have said, in case you have any questions or even if it's outside what they said, I'd love to respond to some of those. So I'd love for you to think about any burning question that you might have wanted to ask, but maybe you feel like, oh, I want to ask maybe a female photographer or a woman or a short person from the reader who is not a boo, please let me call us. <laughs> yeah, think about those questions. As you think about those questions, I'm going to take the next five to 10 minutes to just add on to everything they've said. They've built a very good foundation. They've talked about mentorship. They've talked about showing up for itself. They've talked about uh, thinking outside the box and just going wild. This thing is for having a bit of madness in you. You know what his son is doing. I know his kind of madness. Uh, I was with a Chualu last month in um, in um, MVP settlement, and we're talking about his son. We saw a tweet of his, and we're talking about him. And a friend was telling me how his son reminds him a lot about himself. Um, you must know Edward de Chalu if you're in photography. He's like the grandfather of us all. So you must know Edward de Chalu, you must know people like Jumba Martin. Those are forefathers in Uganda photography and photojournalism. Yes. Um, so, and he talked about a madness that he has. You know, it takes a certain level of crazy to just go out there and get your camera and you say, you know what, I'm going to go create images and I'm going to put them out there. It takes a, a certain way it has to go off a bit. You can't know because, first of all, when people already see you with your camera, they're already looking at you with eyes like, you know, it's not the same thing like when you have a phone. People are naturally reactive to the sight of a camera. Even you as a photographer, if you're in the field and you see someone else with a camera, but now it's not who's holding the camera, immediately you have a certain response or your body responds a certain way. So I love the foundation that Abu and uh, the Nicholas are built. And on that foundation, I just want to add the part that they talked about me being a teacher. Uh, so being a teacher, it means I'm going to remind you about the other side of photography, which I have found to be working, but uh, might not be very common or might not be very much embraced in our industry. And I remember Mr. Abu talked about how, how there's so many opportunities, like we all can't, we can't compete in a bad way because there's so many opportunities. And uh, Abu specifically talked about opportunities for female photographers and how routers called him and they're looking for female photographer and all these things. So the part I want to open your eyes to is a part of the world, even outside Uganda. Uh, one of the, COVID was catastrophic for the whole world. Uh, very negative impacts, so many people died. Uh, businesses, you know, went behind and all. But one of the few good things that came out of COVID is that the world opened up for Africa, especially for African storytellers. All of a sudden, the world was closed and um, they could not have people fly into Uganda to tell these stories. And yet they still wanted stories from Africa. What that meant is there was a blank check for African photographers, African storytellers, because like it or not, the whole world rotates around stories. Everything is storytelling. The news is storytelling, business is storytelling, marketing is storytelling. Anyone who has a voice, whether that voice is visual, written, or spoken voice, you have something that you can sell to the world. So one of the things that happened with COVID is it opened the world for us. If you look between the years of 2020 to 2022, now 2023, so many mentorship opportunities opened up, so many funds, so many grants, so many collaboration projects came up. Almost every uh, global media house or global news agency was coming up with a fellowship, a mentorship, a grant, a something um, to work with African 
storytellers. That of, okay, if you don't know how to tell storytellers, uh, tell stories at our standard. Let's do it as a mentorship. We first teach you how we want you to do it, and we pay you to learn. Then after, we pay you to do the work the way we want it. All of those things happen for us. So what I want to open our eyes to, in addition to everything that Abu and Nicholas have talked about, is um, the world of uh, education in photography, in photojournalism, in documentary photography, in storytelling. There is a whole world that I would encourage us, especially that most of us here students, already even at where you are, to invest in that world, to invest time in the education world. How are you? Very good. Right on. Vice President, I ask you. Yes. Very good. You got to be standing on. Thank you. 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 Thank you.